Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today I wanted to put together at least 12, I think there's actually 13 Dollar Tree Easter DIYs. We know spring is on the rise, so let's get to crafting for spring and Easter, some of my favorite things to craft for. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy this content. So I'm gonna start off with this Dollar Tree egg from last year i'm going to take it apart we'll save that little egg for a different project i'm going to feed some twine through the top hole that way it's already there we have something to hang it from and we don't have to worry about it later then i grab my nautical rope i chose well i only have one nautical row let's be real the eight foot strand i want to say it probably took like three or four I started using like my odds and ends that I had left over from that bunny rug I made so you guys I started you know wrapping this thing and I I cut cut it off I didn't think you guys wanted to watch it all but as I started coming down to like the bottom curves it started this slant right so then I start on the other side and then this happened I don't know what happened but how I say everything happens for a reason because we add something to cover that up and it's perfection. So I'm going to grab this bunny DIY sign. Again, this is from last year. My stores still have not gotten like any of the new Easter signs in. So I'm just using what I have. So I am going to attach the bunny just with hot glue. And as you saw, we're going to cover the holes with one of the uh, carrots and you guys this DIY is so easy because we're literally doing nothing to the sign itself all we're doing is wrapping it and then we're going to add some embellishments which you'll see so I glue that to the top to cover the holes then we will glue the little Easter part and good thing this happened because I definitely wasn't paying attention to which one said happy and which one said Easter just let's be real all right, so now I'm gonna grab some orange burlap uh, ribbon from Dollar Tree. This other ribbon is from um, Walmart during Halloween. I just uh, hot glue it into a cylinder, or I call it a cylinder. I don't know what you want to call it. All right, anywho. So I'm gonna grab that, and then we're going to just scrunch both of these pieces together. We're gonna grab some twine and we are gonna wrap it around the middle. And this is like the cutest bow. I think it brings it up a notch from the one that uh, she came with. And then we cut the remainder of that twine off and then we'll hot glue that to where that little hole is in her head. Look at how that just brings it up just a, just a little bit. I won't say the dreaded word high end. I know so many people hate that. So I say I'll take it up a notch. All right, I was actually watching um, Holly from Hot Humble Pie, and she was saying to do this to the carrots instead of the raffia because it brings it up a notch. Again, there I say it again. But it really does. Like, it gives these carrots a whole different look. These are the smaller ones, again, that I had last year. This year, I believe they came out with a bigger version and a four-pack. But this is just box, box wood leaves. And now... To cover this hole that I created, I am just taking boxwood leaves. These are from Walmart. And I am going to arrange them in there with some hot glue to cover that up. And like I said, everything happens for a reason. Because I really love how this ended up coming out. And then I'm just going to hot glue two carrots to the side. And we are done. And y'all, this thing came out so, this thing is so heavy. But anyways, I hope you love it. This really is an easy DIY, especially if you can wrap this around without creating a hole. Then you don't have to add the boxwood or the carrots either. So a great beginner's craft, but it looks so good. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I don't think you guys are ready for this cuteness right here, okay? Let's get started. So I'm gonna take this sign from, it's actually a Halloween sign, but look at the shape on this thing. Like it is so pretty. I knew I had to use it. So you guys, I'm going in with black paint. Now I've done several calendar videos. I'll link them down in the description box. And a lot of subscribers kept suggesting use black. It'll cover up those numbers and the black squares that might show through the paper. 
Um, I've tried white. I've tried just doing it on like the brown. It does not work. The black works like a charm. So that is why I'm painting the back of this black. Then getting my calendar piece, this is from the Simply Blessed calendar. I am just going and kind of outlining where I want my page to be. That way when I take it off, I know where to place it back down. So I'm just using my jumbo glue stick. You are more than welcome to use Mod Podge or whatever you fancy, but this is what I like to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and just smooth this out here. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around. We're gonna go ahead and get our Arteza craft knife. I'm gonna clean this up. Y'all, this came out way better. This is like my starting point. This is like what I envisioned and then that's as far. And then it just kind of came together. Okay, anyways. So smoothing this out, then I'm gonna get a sanding block. I'm just gonna kind of try and smooth out like the rough edges here and that is done with that so then i'm going to go ahead and we are going to clean up our workspace with our little ladybug grab some um shipping paper and you guys know i have to cover up the backs i do it in like every video that i use these signs i am just cutting a piece out hot gluing it on the back and then we are gonna turn it around, clean it up, and now you have a fresh back. Nobody's gonna know that was a Halloween sign, and I just have to do that. Okay, now taking some boxwood. This is from Walmart. I buy it whenever I see it because it's super hit or miss. And I am just going to play around with these. I am just hot gluing them directly to my sign, trying to cover up all of that black paint. I will do the right side exactly the same way, making sure that we have an even amount on each side. I just really wanted this looking full and covering all of that black paint. So as you can see, I'm just taking little pieces here and there, hot gluing them to fill them up. And then once we are done with that, I actually was envisioning at first the rabbit wood cut out right here, see? And I was like, no, that looks so weird, the rabbit on the rabbit. So then I grab some um, blah, 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 ribbon. Now this ribbon, you guys, we are gonna cut three pieces, 14 inches long. And I got this at Hobby Lobby. And we are going to glue the ends of two of these pieces together. And I tried to do this a little slower. I do have a bow video though. And we are also going to cut a six inch strip as well and this is going to become the middle of our bow so cut that one you are also going to glue the ends together so it's almost going to look like a little like tunnel cylinder if that makes sense so there you go easy peasy then taking our um little dovetail over here well first i'm going to fold them in half i always fold them in half that way i know where my middle point is and there's no guessing or lopsided bows I'm gonna cut some dovetails, which I don't do such a great job doing that, so I have to recut them anyways. And um, then we are going to put our bow together. I use zip ties. Uh, it is like the easiest when you use zip ties. So we are gonna scrunch these bows together. Scrunchy, scrunch, scrunchy, scrunch. There you go, hold it. Then get your tail, scrunch it up into the bottom, and then that is your middle. And I'm putting that zip tie through the middle do not zip tie it tight yet. Fluff your bow out. See if your loops are nice and even, if it's how you like it, if you need to pull it, however you need. Once you know that your bow is exactly how you want it to look, then tighten up your zip tie and cut the back of it off. And you got yourself a beautiful bow. Look at how good that looks, y'all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then we're just going to hot glue that on. And all that we have left to do is attach our twine to the top of our sign so that we can hang her up. Oh, so cute. And I just poke holes through. I'm going to, um, what you call it? Put some painter's tape. It doesn't matter what tape at the ends, push that through our hole. I just double knot it on the back here so that it doesn't come through. And we're gonna do the same for the other side and I cannot wait. Look at how beautiful this calendar page came out. 
all I knew was I wanted this calendar page on a sign and it just ended up coming together so beautifully. I cannot wait to display it somewhere in my home. I hope it inspires you to get those calendars out if you were fortunate enough to. So taking three of these pumpkins from fall, I'm so glad I held on to some of these because I knew I would need them. So I take some hot glue, uh, not some hot glue, heat gun to take the tops off. Then I take it outside and I totally sand all the glitter and the stickers off. I then am going to take some plaster by Waverly and I'm going to just give these one coat. I wanted mine. She chose some very uh, bold and beautiful colors. I wanted to kind of keep um, like a rustic theme to my DIYs, keep them a little cohesive. So I'm going to do mine plaster. We're going to paint the front and the back so that we have a finished look and piece. And then I'm going to take my antique wax and my stencil brush from Dollar Tree and we are going to hit those edges. Now I don't go over the entire block with antique wax. I just want to emphasize the edges of my block so that when I put the letters and stuff, it really pops. So I love the way that this ended up coming out and looking. Sorry, I'm running out of breath here, you guys. All right. And then I just hit the sides as well. All right, now don't kill me, but I've had these bunnies for over a year, didn't find myself using them, so I decided, you know what, instead of keeping them in my stash, I'm going to rip the ears off of them. Uh, Wendy ended up tracing out ears, so that's an option too, but this just made this DIY like 10 times easier, let's face it. So I cut the ears off and then all I do is I play around with placement. Like some of them have like an ear tilted to the side, one of the blocks, um, both ears are straight up. So just have fun with it. Um, give, the, give these little bunnies some personality, but I scored having these cause it really did make this DIY super easy. <laughs> So here our bunnies are. Now, I didn't have the little bunny tails from Dollar Tree. I also was beyond too lazy to make pom-poms myself. So I was like, how can I make this a little different with what I have? So I have these wood flowers. These are from Dollar Tree, you guys, from Dollar Tree. And I hot glued these on. Now, make sure to stand them up when you hot glue because once I stood them up, I realized that I put the flowers too far down and they were toppling over. All right, then I'm going to create just raffia bows. I just wrap the raffia around my hand three times, use a piece of it uh, to wrap around the middle for our bow, and then I just kind of, you know, fluff it, scrunch it up uh, to make it look more full, and then I hot glue that to the top. Now, Wendy uses these really beautiful kind of like lace, raffia, ribbon bows. But again, that's what's nice about these DIYs is you can really make them your own. Like hers looks completely different than mine, but like my look in my home is more like this. So I love that you could take the bones of a DIY and make it your own. All right. So we're almost done here. We are just going to take these wood letters from Dollar Tree, a baby wipe, antique wax, and then we are going to stain these up. You can also use the black sticker letters from uh, Dollar Tree, vinyl, or, you know, make a stencil as well. So I hot glue these to the center. At first I was like, ooh, are these too small for this? But I actually liked that, like, I don't know, they were like front and center and they really popped to me anyways. So this is how my version came out. I love their rustic look. They kind of remind me of my IOD pumpkin, like two by four pumpkins. Um, I love it. I love the addition of the pink little bunny tail with a flower and I hope you guys like them too. Make sure to check Wendy out. $40 for this and um, we made it for, yeah, a lot less than $40, but it was very time consuming. So I took this rug from Dollar Tree and it's one of like the longer skinnier ones. Now, when I started this project, I had the nautical rope that was nine and a half feet. So it was a skinnier nautical rope. Well, of course your girl ran out of that nautical rope and had to go to Dollar Tree. And the only one they had was the eight foot, which is wider. So you'll see that there's a little difference, but yeah, don't worry about it. Okay, so I am just going to hot glue this directly to our rug. You can see I'm gonna put a little bit of an overhang on 
both sides and you'll see why later. Um, but you guys, this put, put on a long movie, like put on Titanic or something. Okay. You're going to go through a lot of glue sticks and you're going to go through at least, I used four packs, no, three packs of the nine and a half foot rope. And then, um, that was three, seven of the eight and a half. So you are eight. So you can see like the skinnier is on top and the thicker is on bottom, but you know what? We made it work. We made it work. All right. So now I'm just going to cut these down so that they all match. So we don't, it don't look all janky. And then I am going to fray these out. So all I'm doing is twisting them. Then I get my weeding tool though, and I just pick them apart. And that was a lot easier than twisting all of them open. But I really liked the frayed look. If that ain't your look, then you can easily maybe just go around the entire carpet with um, some more nautical rope for it to be finished. Next, I take this stencil. I made this with a folder divider on my Cricut. I swear this isn't even like a sponsored Cricut video, you guys. I just happen to actually be playing around with my Cricut. Um, so I made this. We're going to cut out the bunny. I'm taking, I think that, what is this, pool by Waverly? And I'm going to just stipple the paint right on. I only have to do one coat of each color paint on this and it turned out fabulous. I will say, once you lift your stencil up, if that's what you're using, make sure to clean the back of it. Cause once I moved it over to do the pink, there was a little bit of that blue underneath that kind of got on the rug, but I, I, I fixed it. All right, so now you'll pull that up. Look at how good that came out. And I did my pink. Now I'm taking the other part of the transfer that I cut out and I lay that on top of my bunny so that I could do its tail. So easy peasy. And these turned out so stinking cute. Look at that. Now you guys, I work, like I film with my thumb. So I didn't realize that the Kirkland's edition said like hop on in. So I kind of forgot that part. But needless to say, it came out cute nonetheless. Uh, the pink is Diva Pink by I think Apple Barrel. And then the Light Lavender by Folk Art is going to be the purple you're going to see. All you have to do is spray this with some like water-based spar urethane or polyacrylic. I do have an overhang on my porch, but this is definitely going outside. I love the way it looked. It costs us $11 in Dollar Tree supplies and then the dividers I already had, the paint I already had. So 11 versus, what was that? 30, 40, $40. So this next one, you guys, this is just me. I made this, I was going off of the first DIY and I was like, okay, well I can't just leave this out. So I just added it in here. So I'm taking a Dollar Tree sign on the left, then this Dollar General chicken wire sign. It usually has like a, a cow or a chicken or something like that on it. And they usually always have them at my Dollar Generals. And I traced out some cardstock. And then because I'm gonna use that cardstock in the backgrounds, I decided to get plaster and distress this frame so that it wasn't like brown on top of brown. I take that cardstock and then I am going to glue it to the back. And the reason why I'm taking the cardstock is because we need to cover the uh, words on our Dollar Tree sign. So I just hot glue that cardstock straight to the back. Easy peasy. And uh, then we are going to take it and hot glue it right over. Ooh, you see all those grays? Yep. Mm -hmm. They came with the third one. Okay. So hot gluing that on. Now we're going to take a uh, wood carrot cut out from Dollar Tree, trace on our scrapbook paper. My girlfriend Lisa sent me this and I love it. All right, so I'm just gonna hot glue mine on. You can Mod Podge, you could use a glue stick, you do you. And then I take my rough sanding block from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna hit the sides. And then because it had a texture, the actual scrapbook paper did, I ran it over top and look at how it brings those little dots out. So cute. All right, now grabbing some boxwood, I take that, we're gonna hot glue that. And then I did stain the top of the carrot only because, so I didn't want it to be like all um, natural wood popping out through the boxwood, if that makes sense. All right, 
So now we're gonna wrap some twine around to hide the bottom of that boxwood. I'm gonna do a two loop finger bow, hot glue that over to the corner, use the biscuit, and then we're just going to hot glue our carrot straight into the middle. This was such an easy DIY. And then for the top to hang it, because it is front heavy, it would just topple over. I doubled up some twine, tied knots on the ends, and then I'm just gonna hot glue them right to the top. So easy, look at that. And this came out so adorable. This is why I couldn't leave it out. Like this one and the first DIY just go together like, you know, cookies and milk. I love it. And it was so easy to make. And you can do this same layout with like the bunny cutout, the uh, egg cutout. I mean, whatever you want. This is a two pack of table runners I got on Amazon for like dirt cheap, y'all. Okay. And I am going to take this Dollar Tree bath mat. And I, this rabbit template is from a rabbit I cut out on my Cricut. This is like chipboard and I was like, perfection, already have something. So I just grabbed my permanent marker, traced it out. We're gonna do two of these bunnies and then I am cutting it out. And y'all know I've asked several times about <laughs> scissors to cut fabric. And it's one of those things, you know, you are always in a store. And I tell myself like, nah, I don't wanna spend money on it. And I don't use them all the time. And then I find myself like, oh man, these are like my kid's scissors and they cut better than my usual scissors on my craft table. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I finished cutting this. Now I told myself the splotchiness like wasn't gonna bother me. Well, it did. <laughs> so then I found myself plucking the little fibers out of my scraps and then filling these little white holes with hot glue and pressing the fibers onto the rabbit. And as I kept going, I was like, no, it's not gonna bother me. Oh, that one's fine. No, I had to cover the whole dang thing. So it'll take you a lot less time if things like that don't bother you. So I had to cut this runner down to size because it was too long for my table. So to cover that raw edge, I decided to take this ribbon from Dollar Tree. Now, the runner itself is very thin the um the ribbon is very thin so i grabbed my silicone mat and i'm going to put that under my um my rabbit and my table runner so that it doesn't stick to my measuring mat so i'm using my silicone spatula i have those in my amazon as well there's like a four pack for i think five dollars and i am going to run that ribbon down the the end of this just to make it look finished and whatever I do on the right I'm going to do on the left side so now I'm just going to take my bunny I'm just using this as kind of like a guide to keep it straight and I am going to hot glue just sections at a time I didn't want to try and hot glue put hot glue over the whole back and then try flipping it over that just would have turned out to be a hot mess so now I'm going to make a fabric uh, flower so as you can see, I just kind of twisted it in the middle and now I'm going around in a circle. Now, as I go around, you'll see that I'm uh, twisting my fabric and then applying hot glue and pressing it together. So again, I'm twisting the fabric, applying some hot glue, and then, so I'm just twisting as I go. Twist, hot glue, twist it up just to make it a little tighter. And you can do this with any kind of fabric. And this was just the excess of the table runner I had cut off. I'm gonna glue that little bunny tail right there. And that was it, you guys. And this was so inexpensive. I think like in total $3 or something like that to make, cause I think it was, this runner was really, really inexpensive. But this is already on my table. I love the way it looks. It's the first time I ever used a runner on my table. So I hope this inspired you to try it out as well. We're, we're going with the bright colors of our tablescape. So I grabbed this plastic container, our platter from Dollar Tree, cause I thought it reminded me of an Easter egg shape. So the back is, has like this beautiful detail. So I started painting with Pool by Waverly on the back. 
thinking, hmm, maybe the design will like come through on the front. But when I flipped it, not so much. So I ended up painting the front and the back. I did a double coat on the inside. Now I'm taking my DIY white wax and I'm gonna coat the inside of this. And y'all, this ended up turning out really pretty because it made it look like wispy clouds in the background of my bunny. Um, this wax is also going to seal our chalk paint in there as well. So after I'm done with that, I'm going to um, get that bunny template that's on the right. I just found that on Google, uploaded it to Canva, resized it and printed it out. Um, I will try finding this bunny on Google again and attaching it down below for you guys. So now I'm taking one of these metal tray platter things from Dollar Tree and I am just tracing out my template with a permanent marker. Now these cut super easy but you still have to watch out because it does get sharp. But I mean seriously it, it cut so smoothly. So I just made sure to cut inside the black um, marker lines so that because I wanted my bunny to face to the right. So after that's done, I get plaster by Waverly and I am going to coat our entire bunny. Now be careful because this is super, super thin material. So it does bend um, and it could rip. And then I take my rough sanding block. I'm going to go over the bunny just to bring out all that beautiful texture in the metal. And then I grab my gray wax. Now y'all do you. I liked the wax. I thought it gave it like this shadow effect. If you don't like it, don't do it. Again, this is just for inspiration, but I really loved how it made the bunny pop. All right, so now I'm taking four Jenga blocks. We're gonna turn them on their sides. And sorry if you could hear my tummy, it's growling, baby's hungry. And I'm gonna put four of these on her. So then I put some more hot glue on there, attach it to, I'm gonna call this my egg. And I am now gonna start decorating it. So we get some Spanish moss. I'm gonna bring it up to about her arm. But you do you, you bring it up however far you want or however low you want. And I'm gonna secure it with a little bit of hot glue. Then I'm gonna take, these are the lavender picks from Amazon that I said, they look so real, they're stunning. Um, and I'm gonna put those behind. Now you could drop some hot glue in there, but these were not moving. All right, now I put this little headband on her. I got this idea from Christina Elizabeth and I, I knew this bunny needed something. So I just squeezed some Spanish moss together, made this little headband tiara, and then taking these paper flowers that one of my amazing subscribers sent me, I am going to go ahead and get some hot glue and attach those to her headband. So after that, we just have to get some jute cord. I put it right behind the lip of this tray do the same thing on the other side and we are done with this. And look it, I'm, I've never used this color, the pool from Waverly, and I love how all of this looks together. I am really shocked how, how much I like this bright color, but um, I think it's gorgeous and I hope you guys have fun making one yourself. All right, for this one, easy peasy Dollar Tree Squizzy. Okay. So this is a plate from Dollar Tree. And uh, I am just going to put two coats of Rust-Oleum Linen White. Like when I put the, the thumbnail that said easy, I meant these are super easy. So we are going to just paint the front. The back is fully night, it's black, it looks good. So I'm not worried about covering the back and you know if it was not good on the back, I would cover it up, but we are good. So I am going to do two coats of linen white and rust-oleum. And after we are done with two coats, I am going to take our antique wax and our plaid uh, mini chip brush. Y'all, if you are avid crafters, painters, you need these in your life. I will leave the link for them down in the description box. They are so inexpensive and they leave the perfect distressed effect on anything you use them on. So. Next, we are gonna grab a bunny. This one is from Dollar General. It was $2 and it is much smaller than the Dollar Tree ones, but it is thicker. 
And then taking these moss sheets, moss uh, sheets from Dollar Tree, I, well, one wouldn't fit on the whole bunny, so we're gonna use two pieces here, and I'm gonna cap this one off right at the line of the ears. And at first I was super scared that you would see like the harsh line of them connecting, but it blends into each other so well. I was so happy with the outcome. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and we're just gonna cut around. It was really easy to cut through. Definitely pick these sheets up at Dollar Tree if you see them. And then after we're done with that, I am going to grab some Dollar Tree ribbon. I found this ribbon. Oh no, never mind. First, we're gonna prop this bunny up. So the Jenga block wasn't high enough. So I grabbed these domino pieces. I'm gonna use five of them and hot glue them to each other. Sorry, I don't know what my kids are doing above me. Um, and we are gonna use this as kind of like a riser because if we didn't, we would only be putting hot glue on like the very tips of the ears and the bottom of the body. So this is going to make sure that it's attached to the plate. So um, now we are going to hot glue it, hot glue the bottom of the body. That way it's sitting on that plate rim as well. Now, taking our ribbon, I'm gonna create a finger bow, just a one loop finger bow. Again, I'll leave the uh, my bow tutorial down in the description box. Absolutely love this ribbon from Dollar Tree. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna cut that, clean it up, then we're gonna hot glue it. This is gonna be a girl bunny for us. Then taking some Dollar Tree uh, blah, 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 buttons. Okay, how many of you are like me? I will literally start with a button. There we go, that's the one I end up choosing. But I have to go through all of them first. Okay, so then I start with the second one I chose. Hot glue that on and then, okay. So you guys, I just wanted to show you really quickly. So you can stuff flowers behind this bunny. I couldn't figure out a way to hot glue it without it making looking like a hot, making it look like a hot mess. So then I found that like if you just put them more towards the bottom of the body, that you can stuff them in there, and then that way you can actually remove them if you don't want. You could change up the flowers weekly if you're not vibing the yellow anymore. So I am actually going to show you how it looks both ways if I, you know, ever want to break away from this. <laughs> okay, so here it is with the flowers. Now, I like it. I like the vibrancy, but the I felt like the bunny body kind of blended in with the green of the um, the leaves. So maybe take the leaves off, I'm not sure. But then I'm also gonna show you how it looks without. So I like this, like I feel like it looks very farmhouse, more like modern farmhouse because of its simplicity. And I love that you can see all of the detail and the distressing. She is absolutely beautiful. Let me know what you think about this bunny girl down in the comments. My favorite DIY first. So taking nautical rope from Dollar Tree, uh, went through like three pairs of scissors to finally get this to cut, but we are just cutting the tape off the end. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab some hot glue, finger protector, and I always put hot glue in between the like rope and then I will twist it up tight that way it holds together and it doesn't unravel on you and it always seems to do the trick so taking our hot glue gun i am just going to start rolling this into itself and at first i'm trying to do this like up in the air just holding it and then i'm like girl uh you have your mat there your silicone mat there for a reason use it so then i get smart and i bring it down to the silicone mat so when I am wrapping this, I am getting the hot glue and I am stringing the bead of glue at the very bottom of the nautical rope and then kind of almost like dragging it into there. That way the hot glue doesn't come out on the top because that'll look nasty. So you're going to you're going to spin this around as full as you want it. Um, I just kind of eyeballed how big I wanted these and then I just make sure to hot glue the end and then look at all that hot glue on the bottom. No, thank you. So now I'm just measuring out my bunny ears. So make these as big as you want, as little as you want. And then I make sure just to cut as many pieces for the ears as you're going to make bunnies. Does that make sense? So again, hot gluing the end so that they don't unravel on us. 
And then we're gonna get a hot glue, again, a lot of hot glue. And I'm gonna put the hot glue towards the back of this nautical rope. Gonna push it in there, and then I'm just gonna get a little, little baby dab of hot glue on the front of that ear. It's hardly noticeable. And I just press my finger into it just so I know that it's secured on both sides. Now right here, I highly recommend cutting them and getting them as flat as possible at the end so that they sit flush with your bunny head. So I'm gonna repeat that step for the second ear. Again, just hot gluing the end so we don't have unraveling and attaching those to the back. And I, oh gosh, these came out so cute. So you guys know I need a finished product, right? The hot glue mess that was on the back was just way too much. So I started it this way, but I'm gonna hop to the second bunny I did because it was just way easier, okay? So look, before I did the ears on this one, I put hot glue on it, lay it down on my burlap. I just kind of dab it. You don't need to press hard because you the whole purpose is to cover the hot glue, not push it through your burlap. And then I cut around it and this just makes it look clean. It makes it look finished. And y'all know I love finished. So this, you guys, is the same thing we're doing. So attaching ears to this one. Oh, Everett, he loves the color. Um, so we're gonna finish the ears and now we're gonna accessorize them. So this is some um, ribbon that I got from Michaels, 70% off. I just applied that hot glue to the back of the ear laid it on the ribbon and then we're just cutting right around it. This was so much easier than trying to trace around the ribbon, then cut it out, then lay it on. This just <clears throat> worked. It was easy peasy, you guys. These are so cute. I wanna like make a million of them and sell them, I swear. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. So then taking a strand of this, I'm gonna take the wire out, cut it a little thinner and we're gonna make a finger bow. I will attach that video down below for you. It is in real time and much easier to follow. And then we are going to hot glue this to the bottom of our bunny as a little necktie. Oh gosh, these are so adorable. These are like my favorite, favorite, favorite. Okay, so then for the second one, I took a Dollar Tree doily and we are gonna use this for her little ears. So again, I'm just going to apply hot glue to the back of the ear and then just lay it on there. It's on my silicone mat, so that's good. And then I'm just going to cut around this. Now for her, which I wasn't thinking clearly, when we make her bow, I put it down on the neckline like I did for the little boy bunny, which I wish I would have just done it up top to make it like look like a hair bow. But anyways, nonetheless, they still came out super, super cute. So again, I just took a piece of that doily, making a finger bow. It kind of looks like it's falling apart, but that's totally fine with me because it looks rustic and primitive and oh, I'm in love with you bunnies. Oh my gosh. Let me know down in comments if you are going to be trying this. You guys, this only took one of the eight foot nautical ropes at Dollar Tree. I think it's eight foot. I don't know what it is, but only one of those bundles. And look at how adorable these two came out. I am obsessed. I feel like I need to sell these on Etsy or something. They're just, oh, they're so cute. So here is our first Kirkland's DIY do pivot hop it bunny wreath. So this was 30 bucks. And right away when I saw this, I was like, oh, I know what we could do. So we are going to take the long hula skirt from Dollar Tree. Keep in mind, there's two lengths to these hula skirts. There's a short and there's a long. We want the long one. Um, so I'm going to take my hula skirt. I'm going to tape it up to, I just use a paint cloth, drop cloth. And you can see I'm gathering two strands each for each of my braid strands. <laughs> Hope that made sense. And then we are going to braid this all the way down. Now we're going to make four braids total. Um, so one hula skirt will be plenty and you'll have some left over. Now I get some clear rubber bands from Dollar Tree and then I am going to band these braids off on the top and the bottom just like you are braiding someone's hair. Um, and then, sorry, I was I, I feel like I just said um a million times. Okay, so now we're gonna cut that off. Next, we're gonna take some white foam board. We're gonna take this metal 
like wire circle that's also from Dollar Tree and we aren't attaching our braids to the wire form we are attaching it to the whiteboard I am only using this wire form to create a perfect circle so you can see I'm taking our braid you, we obviously are going to have to connect them they aren't long enough and I'm going to take that all the way around to the other side so like we're going to create a half circle with these here easy peasy okay all right and then we're going to follow this all the way down so we're going to get a second braid start gluing it then we're going to take the third braid and we are going to do another layer right on the inside of that first braid okay so you can see i didn't touch i didn't glue anything to the wire form i'm just using it to create this beautiful perfect circle so we continue to do that all the way around and we're using the foam board so it has something sturdy for like the bunny and the florals to attach to next i take my craft knife now you can see i'm angling my craft knife where essentially it's almost laying on its side because i didn't want to cut it straight down because then when you hang it you're going to see that white foam board we don't want that so i'm cutting it at an angle so you won't be able to see that and then i do the same thing for the inside laying that craft knife flat be very careful you guys because if you hit some hot glue you might hit a little snag there but this worked absolutely great it i didn't cut any of the um the hula skirt all right next to get that darker color like the inspiration photo i take the lightest amount of antique wax with my chip brush and rub that into my braids you don't want too much of it because then it's going to be like all oily and nasty so i let that dry then i get my my greens stash this is like where all my green scraps go and then i have another bucket for all my flower scraps but this is why you save your scraps you guys so i'm picking out all of these leaves and different like filigree things and i am going to start attaching them so you can see i'm starting where we connected the two braids together so that you can't see that and keep in mind the kirkland's ones one they had kind of like their stems kind of poking out everywhere you do you i liked this look a little bit better for me but i am just going to start playing around with it i'm going to fill it up on both sides i'm not going to put you through the torture of watching that because it takes some time but you can see i'm using two different color leaves just seeing what works i'm starting on the um, tops and then working my way towards the bottom and next i you guys i cut this with my cricut is it's the two millimeter chipboard and uh, i just used my knife blade and you guys like psh, i don't know why i'm so intimidated to try new things on my cricut because this was as simple as just changing out the the tool and it cut this super beautiful bunny and it's nice and thick and I, i'm just like yes 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 so i cover it with plaster and then i'm going to put it on that wreath again just to see the placement oh no i lied i put it vinyl on there first then i lay it on the wreath realize i need to cover a little bit more of our braids there and then i will hot glue the bunny directly on to our wreath so next you guys i took these little glitter um, Easter eggs from Dollar Tree and I painted all of them in different colors I stuck them on the um, green stick part of florals the stems <laughs> you're picking up what I'm putting down and then I am just putting them behind the leaves hot gluing them in just playing around with the placement here and you're just going to have fun with it at this point and i know that they make like white eggs but i couldn't find those in mine then we attach some twine at the top loop it through and that is it so kirkland's was like 30 dollars and ours total was about five bucks so i mean with my scraps i already had the chipboard and all of that stuff but i think this came out super beautiful 
I love that bunny. Let me know what you guys think about this wreath and if you guys are gonna try and make it yourself. We're starting with these carrot wood cutouts from Dollar Tree. I am just taking a baby wipe and then we are rubbing some antique wax on. These are actually gonna be the back. You guys know I love a finished product, so that's what I decided to do. So now taking this ribbon I got from Michaels, I wanna cover the carrots in this ribbon, but it wouldn't carry the entire top part. So I'm cutting pieces out, take that um, metal out the wire, and then I am coating it with some hot glue and I'm gonna lay it right on top of that ribbon so I know it co covers it. And then I'm just lightly patting it. We don't want it to go through the ribbon here. So then I'm just gonna cut out around here. I'm gonna cut this top part off because as you can see, it doesn't cover the entire top of the carrot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another piece, we're gonna lay it horizontally, and you can see right there, well, I ended up getting another piece, but if you cut this piece in half, it's the perfect size and you could use one piece for two carrots. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this on top, make sure you take that wire out, it just makes it a lot easier to cut around the carrot. Now I'm gonna take some scissors and we are going to cut around there so we see obviously the top of the carrot. Now y'all, if you have recommendations for like detail scissors, please let me know because one, these you can tell is like ginormous. And then these little ones that I got from Dollar Tree, they only cut like on the very back of the blade. So it was really hard getting like in the like corners of this, but yeah, your girl made it work, you know? So we're gonna go ahead and finish that off. And then we're gonna repeat this for all four, uh, I end up doing four of these carrots here. So again, I'm gonna show you one more time, take all of the wire out, put some hot glue, just put it around the rim and put very, like very light amount. And as you can see, like I dab my fingers on it because I don't want all that hot glue coming up through our ribbon. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this one up. Don't worry about the harsh like black line in between that because we are going to cover that on up. I'm just fast forwarding this, you guys, okay, all right? Okay, so after we're done with that, we're taking twine. You're gonna wrap this around four times, tack it off in the back, voila, and you are going to continue to do that for all four of your carrots. Easy peasy Dollar Tree squeezy, right? I love how this garland turned out. This is my first time making one, so uh, I don't think I did that bad of a job. All right, after those are all done, we are going to take some painter's tape and about three inch pieces of twine, I would say, and I am putting painter's tape on the bottom so we could get it through the hole on the top of the carrot. So there we go. Sorry, Hank's barking up a storm in the backyard. And since this was my first time making one, I didn't know if you were supposed to tie them like super tight on the twine or loose. I decided to give it just like a little space. So I double knotted it, left a little bit of room. That way I could still move it around and play around with the placement after I was done putting all the other ribbons on. And I go ahead and just cut the ends off. It's okay if they're sticking up. And then I'm gonna repeat this step. I'm gonna do it one more time for y'all. It's pretty easy. Uh, and I'm just using my weeding tool to stick the hole back into it. So weeding that through, tying it on, double knotting it nice and loose. Now, after I'm done with all four of those, I tie the ends in a loop just so we could tack it, you could hang it, you could do whatever you want with it. And next I'm gonna grab some of this burlap. I'm also gonna grab our ribbon and some of the doily from our first project. And this is what's fun about garlands because you can make it however you want. You could put as much as you want, as less as you want. Possibilities are endless and that's why I enjoyed making this. So for mine, I did the burlap. Then I got the ribbon. Make sure you take the wire out of it so it's more flexible on the sides here. And I end up using, I think, eight pieces total of the ribbon. And I love that they got the straight lines right there for you, girl. Yes, ma'am. All right, so 
Then taking uh, the doilies from Dollar Tree come in two packs. So this was the second one and I'm just cutting this in strips. Then, then I get smarter and get my rotary blade from Dollar Tree. That thing is awesome. Pick one up. So I'm going to take the doily and I'm going to tie it on each side of our burlap. And I don't care that it looks almost like it's falling apart because I want it to look rustic and old like you would see it in like an antique shop or something. And I then take the ribbon, tie that on each side of the doily, and we're going to repeat this step all the way through, even on the right and left side of the end carrots. Now, as I'm doing this, I'm like telling you guys, oh, you guys need to add some like orange to it. Well, you will see, I did end up adding a very like thin ribbon of orange and I think this turned out so well. For some reason they seem to kind of like blend in right here but on my window you can perfectly see that these are carrots and I love how rustic kind of like primitive they look. It definitely stole my heart for sure. All right you guys. Content. Okay, for this one, we are taking a new sign. Don't, y'all don't gotta get sassy with me, okay? I know it's new, people are looking for it, but it was the perfect size, and so I had to use it. And by the way, that welcome comes off very easy. It's just that like foamy word stuff. Okay, so take your twine out. We're gonna go ahead and flip this baby around, get some burnt umber. I realized I didn't have any brown chalk paint. Y'all know I hardly ever use acrylic paints. It's all chalk paint for me, but I didn't have brown. And this worked very well. You don't have to worry about covering the whole thing up. This literally took me like 10 minutes. This is gonna be such a fun project for y'all to do as like a girl's night in, a family night with your kids. It was so easy. Okay, so now taking some plaster by Waverly. I'm just taking a stencil brush from Dollar Tree and I am just going for this bunny. So basically, I'm not good at explaining how I paint. I'm not Bob Ross, but um, this was so easy. It's basically like half a big circle, half a small circle, and then long triangles that slant on one side. Yeah, I'm not good at explaining painting, but as you can see, this was very easy to do. I promise you can do it. And I'm not being neat by any means. I am going through and just dragging this brush just roughly because I did want it. I didn't want it to be pure white or anything. And then I'm going to get some antique wax and just put like a little, little baby amount. That way I can cre create some shadows in our little bunny. And you can see right there, like how much dimension just the little shadows add. And then it helps um, us create a line in between the ears so you really know that there's, you know, definition in there. I absolutely love how this turned out and I was really impressed how fast I did it. So now taking some ribbon, this is from Michaels. I'm gonna create a loop. I think this is about 10 inches long. I'm gonna hot glue the ends together. And then I always press in the middle and fold it in half so I know my um, middle point and I'm folding it up and over. I will leave my bow tutorial down in the description box for you, cutting some dovetails there. And y'all, I don't even like hot glue this together or anything. I get a piece of twine that was left over from another DIY project that was sitting on my table, and you are just going to loop it around and then we will hot glue it down at the very end. So here you go, hot glue it down. And then I did the bow first because I wanted to be able to see the position it was on its the bunny's neck for me to draw, paint the face on. So after we're done with that, we're gonna grab, <laughs> you guys know I don't throw anything away, right? I was about to throw these makeup brushes away and I was like, oh girl, no you are not. These are like synthetic makeup brushes and you could use these for painting. So that's what I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw some eyes on. I'm using Folk Art Rich Black. Then taking some pink from Folk Art as well. This is also chalk paint, doing a little nose. Now it does get darker as it dries. I then take, this, this is like a detailed brush from Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint, I don't know what these are. Is this his mouth? I guess the, the bridge of his nose, the bottom of his, I don't know. And whiskers. You could even put some pink in the middle of its ears. And oh, so cute. Now y'all, I am starting to learn as I craft, let me tell you, because you guys know I like to finish the backs of my signs. Well, I was noticing I would do that first and then I would be getting paint on the back of it. So this time I was like, you know what, let's wait, do it at the end. 
So as usual, I take my brown shipping paper, I start tracing it out and then I cut it. And you guys always know that like this stuff like rolls up on you when you're trying to like cut it perfectly. So I cut it like that and then I'm like, no, don't cut it. Don't cut it, girlfriend. Like hot glue it, put a bigger piece, you know, right there. We're gonna finish hot gluing this up. Then we're gonna take our Arteza craft knife and then go around and clean it up. And this was just so much easier than fighting the brown shipping paper that curls up on you to try and cut it perfectly. Like now I know this perfectly fits the back of my sign. So I just wanted to show you that because it looked so nice. Look at that. Okay. Woo -woo. Okay. Now poking some holes in, we're going to put our twine back in. And then this is when I notice. I'm like, uh, that ear looks a little funny. So I grab some more burnt umber and I clean up the sides. I do go back in and clean up the middle of his ear as well, but I absolutely love how this turned out. I really, really challenge you guys to, to do this with your friends and your family. I think it would be such a fun way seeing how everybody's bunny turns out, how everybody does their faces, picks their bows. I think it would be a lot of fun. Look at how cute you are, mister. Looking all rustic and handsome. I love it. Okay, you guys, this right here. Okay, these are at Dollar Tree. You can see they're kind of, they're kind of rough. Some of them are. And if you see them, pick them up because these are going to make the perfect tear tray signs. I mean, any sign really. So at first I thought these were gonna be like a raw wood. Well, they're not. They almost feel like plastic to me but then as I start trying to sand off this piece of glue I'm like mm, I think this could possibly be what I don't know you guys I'm so confused on this but anyways they easily come apart I'm taking this mix of antique wax and it had chiffon in it and I think it was the wax that did this but it gives it like that crackle effect because the the frame itself was like I said, like a plasticky, plasticky, glossy like texture, but I was so digging it. So I just left it. Then taking this off, um, I was just trying to take this off because it's going to be our back and I wanted just like a flat base down there. Now we're going to paint the front in plaster. It doesn't have to be smooth. Just let it be rough. It's okay if pieces are, are poking out. That's the least of our worries. Now we are going to cover up our back. For me, you guys, it's all about like, I want this to look like you bought it in a store. I don't want anybody to know. Not that I'm ashamed of it. I just want like, I want to be proud of my work. And you know, if somebody came up to me and was like, oh my gosh, should you get this at Home Goods or Hobby Lobby? I'd be like, mm-hmm, yes, ma'am. Okay, so now we're going to put that back in here. Look at how clean the back looks. That's what I'm talking about here. Then taking a decal I made on my, oops, sorry about that, vinyl machine. It says bunny kisses. And I was either gonna do this or bunny trail, but I thought bunny kisses was a little different. And this will be available in my Etsy shop for y'all. So we put that on and that is it. This was a quick, easy DIY. Absolutely love how this turned out. This will definitely be going in my tear tray in the kitchen. And I hope you guys enjoyed these DIYs today. I really think these are some of my favorite ones that I've done so far. And make sure to head down to the description box, check out Nicole's channel, let her know that I sent you. And I hope you guys had an amazing weekend and I will see you back here on Hank. What did you do? Huh? What did you do?